Good morning, Central. How you doing? You guys, all right, okay, good morning, Central. How you guys doing? Let's do that again. Yeah, there we go. That's better. That's better. Let's, let's welcome all those watching with us right now live online too as well. Let's bring them in. Thank you so much for tuning in today. So appreciate you guys. Uh, well, happy Mother's Day to all the moms in the house. Come on, somebody. Man, the moms, they're so amazing. Come on. Yeah, come on, guys. You better clap. You better clap. Moms are so amazing. I, I, I tell you, I, I'm always at, at all, like, my wife is, is just an amazing mom of two of my, my I, say, I, I say boys, but they're not boys, they're men now, uh, two grown men, and she did such a great job with them. And um, she was pretty brilliant at this, at this mother thing, because she, she made Mother's Day into a mother's weekend. Come on. And then, then it turned into a mother's week. Come on, it's not, and we're, I think she's working on Mother's Month. I think that's what, so what do you say, ladies? I think a Mother's Month, that's probably a little, little better, right, in a Mother's Month. So uh, thanks to all the, all, the, all, the, all the kids that came out today that didn't want to be in church. We love you too. Uh, you came because it's Mother's Day, and uh, uh, so it's good to have you guys. And so I got a great picture of her. Um, she also is a motorcycle mama. Yeah, that's her. She get mad at me because that's not her bike anymore. She uh, she's that parked in the garage. She bought an Indian, so now she drives an Indian Scout. And I don't have that picture. She's gonna be mad at me for showing this one. But uh, but but she's she is she is all woman. And I'm telling you, she she, she is tough. I, I'm just gonna let you know that raising two. Two boys in the house. I mean, it was wrestling matches, stuff being broken all the time. You know, I mean, now, now the boys they just pick her up and walk her up the steps. You know what I'm saying? So they, now, now it's like that. But, but uh, she got in the fray of everything, and so she's just such an. I just want to honor her today, and she's such a great mom. And I don't even know if she's she's in the house right now, but I want to honor her anyway. Um, there's, I, I felt like I just wanted to share with with you guys on Mother's Day. Not just a message for the moms, but, but just storms. Because I know it, when it comes to storms in life, when it comes to this subject, I find, it, I find it that I'm usually pretty okay. Like I'll sleep through pretty much anything, you know, but my wife's the one that stays up worrying about stuff and all of that. And, and she'll lean over to me like, how are you sleeping right now? I'm like, because I'm tired. That's why. <laughs> um, I just want to, because it'll be there tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? It's not going anywhere. So so it's, it's just when it comes to the storms of life and things like that, but uh, we've been in a series called The Miracles of Jesus, and uh, we, we're in actually week four now, but there's a lot of things that come around uh, storms. Uh, there's, there's fear uh, in, in moments where, where we could just be fearful. Uh, there's frustration. Some of you are frustrated uh, with the things in your own personal life. Maybe you're just, you know, you're wrestling with an addiction in your own, in your own life, and you're just like, man... I'm just so frustrated with this part of my life, and it just continually just keep, seems to be popping up. Um, and and so and, and maybe maybe even maybe even it's just failure. You just feel like you fail miserably at stuff. And so there's a lot of frustration wrapped around certain things that do happen in our life. And and listen, there's there's financial storms. There's there's consequential storms like stuff that you cheat on your taxes. You got in trouble for it. Like. Like there's just things that you do that you get in trouble for. Some of those storms we we bring on our own self. Come on, we can be honest with that. I I mean I I am a proponent man of bringing on stuff on my own personal life. Like I just like yeah I should have saw that coming but I didn't and and, and now I'm in the middle of this thing. So so there's things that we do in life that create storms around us. But there's also just life in general happens right. Life can just happen to us all, and and there can be just all of these things that are that are that are happening to us. But but I just find it interesting in this particular passage of Scripture in Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, that Jesus is actually leading them into a storm. And I find that interesting because a lot of times we think that, okay, we serve Jesus to get out of storms. We serve Jesus to escape something in our life. Uh, but, but there's times in our life where there's a, there's a test that needs to happen. There's something that needs to take place in your life. And so there's a, there's a testing that happens. And I'm not saying from up here that Jesus leads us into storms and all the storms in our own personal life. Because he said in this world, remember, he did say in this world, you're going to have trouble. He did say that. 
Like he said, I'm not creating it. I'm just saying in this world, you're going to have trouble. But then he said, take heart. I have overcome the world. And so if you want to be an overcomer, then you've got to serve the one that over, overcame. Come on. And, and so, and so he, he, he shares that with his disciples. He shares that with us in Scripture. And in this particular passage, this particular miracle that we're going to talk about today is, is just calming the storms in our life. In Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 35 through 41, and this is in other Scriptures. This is in Matthew. Uh, this is also in, in the book of Luke as well. They have different perspectives on it, but I like kind of how Mark kind of frames it for us. But he says, on the same day when that evening had came, had come, he said, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. And now they, they had left the multitude and they, uh, and they took him along in the boat as he was. I, I find that kind of statement interesting too. Like they took Jesus along as he was. Um, I think in a, in a Christian culture today that we, that in, in the Western Christian culture, a lot of times we try to make Jesus in our image and not the image of what, what the Bible tells us. And I think we, we sometimes we do a poor representation really to the world that, that Jesus is all about uh, love and hope. Uh, uh, there, there is discipline in, in all of that as well, but there's love and hope that, that, that's portrayed. And I think sometimes we, we serve a God and we, we try to create him in our image instead of the image that he's created us in and, and kind of follow him. And because, listen, Jesus never followed anybody. I just want to let you know that. They followed him. He didn't follow the crowd. Come on. They followed him. And so, and so in, this, in this passage, I, I find it kind of interesting. And then, so, so they follow him into this, into this boat. And, so, and, on, and all the other little boats were, were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat against the boat so that it was already filling up. So, so we see here, there's, there's a moment. Now, you have to understand, I've been on the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee is 700 feet below, uh, below sea level. And when cold air comes off the mountains and rolls onto, onto the sea, and what you have to understand is really more like a big lake because it's 13 miles long and eight miles wide. But, when, but when, uh, when the storms start to brew up on the Sea of Galilee, they say that their waves could be up to 10 feet high. So that's pretty wild, pretty crazy when, you, when it comes to a really oversized lake that they call a sea. And uh, actually, this is, this is actually one of the boats that were filling up. So that was a, like, like a first century boat. This is not Pirates of the Caribbean. You're thinking, oh, it's not, not a problem at all. Uh, we, can, we can navigate through this, you know, but no, this is the type of boats that they were in. And uh, which, which also I find fascinating, this next part, but he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. So the boat is filling up with water and Jesus is still asleep on the pillow. And it says, teacher, don't you care that we're perishing? And then he arose and he, he rebuked the wind and, and said to the sea, peace be still. I think, I think that is, if we, could, if we could just adopt anything in that scripture today, it's whatever storm that's happening in your life, whatever thing that's happening around you, whatever's brewing inside of your heart, your life, no matter how anxious you are, or anxiety ridden you are right now, he's saying to that storm, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful and how is it that you have no faith? And they, and they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? And I think one of the, one of the things that, that happens in the midst of a storm, we can either, we can either be about the panic, be about the fear, directing our focus on the storm, or we can redirect our focus. So I did a thing this past week. Um, uh, my wife uh, had, you know, been bugging me for the last three years to get my motorcycle license. And I'm like, no, I don't want to get my motorcycle license. It's not that I don't trust myself. I don't trust anybody else on the road, you know. <laughs> Have you watched anybody riding lately, right? So so that's how I felt about it. But I did it. I did it because she wants me to do it for her. So I, I, I did a thing. So I did a motorcycle class. And in the class, there's this, there's this part where you have to make a U-turn. And uh, I'm, on a, I'm on a Harley 500. So listen, now what, I'm going to put this into perspective. I've never driven a motorcycle before, okay? So can you imagine the nerves? Come on. 
I drove four wheelers, all of that stuff. Even back in the day, before they banned them, I drove three wheeler, like three wheelers, you know, back in the day. So all that stuff was fine, but but two wheels, I was not about, right? So, but 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 I did this, I did this thing. So 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 I'm on it, I'm on this, I'm on this Harley, and I'm 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 going down into the box. And this box, you got to to pass it. You can't put your foot down. You can't do anything. So so I'm going down the box. And what's what's crazy about this uh, facility where I was at the Harley dealer? This was not a flat surface, so it was a hill. So everything was on a hill. So I pr- really, I learned on a hill. And so I'm going into the box down the hill, so that's easy. I'm coasting the bike down into it with using the back brake. But now i got to use the friction zone. The friction zone is the, is the clutch with, you know, with the clutch and shifting at the same, like I'm trying now. Now i got to like give it gear, give it, give it a little bit, give it a little bit of throttle with the, with, with the clutch because I'm getting ready to go back up the hill. So... So, so it helped me, but they, they told me, said, listen, it'll help you to do this because if you look down, you're going to drop the bike. The bike will go down, right? So, so what do they tell you? When they tell you not to look down, what do you do? You look down. That's what it's just, you, it's just, don't tell me to do something. I'm going to do it. Like I don't, I'm, you know, so, so, so they, they're telling me not to look down. I'm kind of look down I'm like a little, little unstable at the first go at it, you know, and it's practice or whatever. And so I'm, I'm a little unstable going into it. Like, I'm, this is like, freaking me out, you know, I got to do the lean thing, you know, and I, but they said, listen, what I want you to do is when you go into it, I want you to turn your head this way. Don't look forward, look backwards. I'm like, what? <laughs> I want to look where I'm going. I don't want to be looking back. They said, no, because when you look, when your head turns and you're looking back, that's where your bike will go. I'm like, well, that's stupid. I don't understand. <laughs> so, so I'm going into it because, you know, and I'm going into it. So I'm look, I'm like doing this. Like I'm, I know I'm looking like an idiot, but I'm like, like looking like this. And and sure enough, the bike turns with me, and I'm trying to do the the, the clutch and the throttle thing because I'm getting ready to go back up the hill. And it goes, and I go right out. I went out out the exit. She said, "Listen, you went out the exit a little fast." Okay, you went out. I said, yeah, but, but ma'am, I, I'm trying to get out of the exit. Like, you wanted me to get back out. So, you know, I'm trying to give it some gas because I'm going back up the hill. And so I'm trying to get used to all that. And, and so, and so wh- wherever I went, my focus was is where I went. And I, I think it's the same thing when, when storms happen in our life. If we continue to focus on the storm, come on. If we're continually focusing on the storm, I believe you'll stay in the storm. But in this passage, it shows us that our, our, our redirection, our focus needs to be off of the storm and more onto him because, because what happens over, over, over a moment, because trust me, it was a fearful moment in doing that for me. Because I'm doing something I've never done before, right? Right? And, and, and by the way, the, the rest of the group, the class that was with us, they're like 20, 22. I think that's wearing in. And I'm like, I am twice their age plus 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Like I am, this is, you know, they're, they're, they're young. I'm, I'm the old guy. They found out I was a pastor. So guess what? I had to pray for the group. You know what I'm saying? They're like, hey, pray for us. Pray for this test. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, listen, you're alone in that test. I can't, I can't drive that bike for you. But, but, it, but, but in this moment, it was the redirection of something. And so what fear enters in, fear, when fear enters something, our faith begins to exit. Let me give you an example. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, it's not going to be on the screen, but in Matthew's Gospel 14, there's, there's a disciple and they're in a storm. They're in another storm. Like Jesus is like, I'm and we're, we're going somewhere with this, this storm thing. So, so they're in a storm, and, and, and Peter looks out on the water when the waves are crashing, and Jesus is actually walking on water. You can read it. It's an incredible miracle. He's walking on water, and Peter says, hey, can I come out? And Jesus says, sure you can. And so Jesus focuses his eyes on, on, on Jesus. Peter does. Peter focuses his eyes on Jesus, and he steps out of the boat, and he starts to walk on water. And then, and then the Bible tells us that then he starts to look around him and redirects his focus to all the wind and all the waves and all the storm. And he gets caught up in that. And the Bible says he begins to sink. He begins to sink. And what does he do? He then redirects his focus. Again, this is our redirection of our focus, guys, is, is really that, that when we're in a storm, 
we're, listen, we're, when we're in a storm, in the storm, we're in the storm with his presence, okay? I want you to understand this. I want you to get this. That, that what he does is he's sinking and he says, Lord, save me. What does the Lord do? Ah, I, I don't know, man. I'm going to let you swim a little bit. Practice your backstroke. Kind of paddling there, a little struggling a little bit. No, no, no. He says, he, he, he reaches down and pulls him out. Now listen, we can all make fun of Peter in a lot of different ways in Scripture, and a lot of people do. But what I want you to understand what Peter did, Peter walked on what other people sank in. And even though he sank himself, he was the one that got out of the boat. Come on, I, say, I always say it like this. It's better to be a wet water walker than a dry boat sitter. Come on. He's the one that got out of the boat and had the faith enough to step out of the boat onto the water but he's walking on it what the storms of life are sinking in. Everybody else is sinking in. He's walking on. I think it's a picture of our focus that needs to be redirected and redirected to God's presence in our life. Listen, peace is not the absence of something. Like we always think that peace is the absence of chaos. Like today is chaos day, right? Because the guys are probably cooking. Come on. It's going to be chaos in the kitchen today. And the guys are cooking for the moms, and the moms ain't doing nothing. Their moms are over there going like, I hope this is good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I know my job today is when I, as soon as I get home, I'm grilling. That's, that's my job today. My son's job, he's making potatoes and some other stuff. But my job today is the grill. So I know what I'm getting ready to get into, right? So that's my job. But it's going to be a little bit of chaos around that because I, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, uh, we gotta make sure everything's proper, everything's looking good, everything's looking nice. And I know the moms always want to jump in, don't you? Come on, moms. You know you want to jump in and help. It's just your nature. It's just, just who you are. You want to help. And and sometimes we, and sometimes in those moments we're trying to help God out, right? We're trying to help Him out. And he's like, no, no, no. I got this. I got this for your life. It's okay. Hold on. Just, just rest in this moment because we always think that peace is the absence of something. But it's really, it's the presence of someone in your life. It's not the absence of chaos. You wouldn't need peace unless you had chaos in your life. Come on. Come on. It's the presence of someone. And I think, and I think when we're in a storm, we got to realize that who is in the boat with us. Amen? We gotta realize that he is in the boat. And, and here's the thing: it's not the what of the storm. It's 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 we sometimes forget who's in the boat with us because the who is way more powerful than the what. The who is way more powerful than what you're going through right now. The who in your life, because there'll be moments where you're standing by a graveside and I've seen it, and, and realizing, you know what, with God in my life, with who's in the boat with me, I'm not alone. Someone breaks your heart, you're not alone, right? You lose your job, you're not alone. A phone call you never want to get. Listen, you are not alone. Jesus never said we would not experience storms. He promised us we'd never be alone in the storm in our life. I want us to get that today. And number two is this. Show us, he shows us in this storm. Uh, he shows us we are in the storm for his purpose for our life. Listen, being in his will, following the Lord does not exempt us from storms in life. Remember, Jesus was the one that invited them to get in the boat to go to the other side. He's almost like saying, hey, I want to take you somewhere. And the direction they were going, the amazing thing, what was happening is there were crowds. Crowds were, were, were just piling in because Jesus was healing the sick. He was casting out evil spirits. There were so many things that were happening right before they get in the boat. And I, the disciples were probably like, and I would have been like, why don't we just stay here? There's a lot of really good things happening right now. But he says, no, let's get in the boat. Let's go to the other side. And the other side represented a lot of different things. The other, the other side represented Gentiles that were not like that people group. And so they had to go to the other side. Why, why are we going over there? As a matter of fact, they superstitious as they were sometimes, they thought the other side, that's where... That's where actually Satan lives on the other side. And, and they thought these things. And so, and so getting in the boat to go to the other side for you and I was like, oh, we'll just go to the other side. No, no, no. For them, this was going to be a struggle. This was going to be a storm. 
And they didn't know there was going to be a physical storm. They thought it might have been a spiritual one when they got to the other side with this different group of people that they're going to minister to. But in this particular one, it's a, it, it's a, it, was a, it was a storm that just brewed up and came out of nowhere, and now they're in the midst of this thing. So we're not exempt when we're following God's will from storms in our life. Because it's not what happens in you, but it's actually what, what's, what's happening in you that's, that's important. It's not what's happening to your life. It's what's happening in you. Then what happens through you is really important. Come on. Actually, 1 Peter says it better like this. He says it like this. You have joy even though you have had to suffer for a little while. He says you may have had to suffer sadness and all kinds of trouble. Your troubles have come in order to prove that your faith is real. In other words, when you have troubles in your life, he's cha- it's a challenge that it, do you have the kind of faith that you need to weather the storms in life? Do you have that kind of faith? And so your troubles have come in order to prove that your faith is real. And it's, and it's worth more than gold. Gold can pass away even though, even though fire has made it pure. Your faith is meant to bring praise, honor, and glory to God. It's there to refine your life. There's a purpose behind the pain right today. There's a purpose behind that storm. There's a purpose in it. And there's moments where your faith will be tested. And and so number three is this. God is good even when life isn't. Because there are just times when life isn't good. When it doesn't feel great. It's like in Mark's, Mark's Gospel chapter 4, Going back to the, the story, he said, and a great windstorm arose and the, and the waves beat into the boat. And so they, they, it was already filling up and, and they turned to Jesus and they said to him, don't you care? And that's, what, that's how it feels sometimes when you're going through something. God, don't you care about this moment in my life? Are you awake? Are you alive? Are you real? All of those things that just pop up in our mind when we think about God and when we're going through something difficult. And here's why this is important, because we tend to project our present situation on God. And when things happen that aren't aren't good, and they're meant to hurt us and and brings pain in our life, and we think that that God will allow this, how could could he actually allow this to take place in our life? We we just think that over and over in our mind, and and, and when we think these things, that happen that are bad, sometimes we think that God isn't good. But He's always good. And this story shows us that even in a storm, even when difficulty is happening and the waves are crashing in and your boat's filling up, that He's actually asleep and that He's actually peaceful in that moment. He took the posture of peace. Listen, all of us in here, we'd be panicking. We'd be trying to get the water out. There'd be crazy chaos going on. And we're, we'll be like, where's Jesus? What's he doing? Now listen, if Jesus got up and was freaked out about it, it's time to all of us panic. It's time to freak out with Jesus because th- that would not be good. But he didn't wake up that way. He had a posture of peace in that moment. And he said, peace be still. As a matter of fact, he said this to his disciples later on in John 14. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give, give you as the world gives it, but do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And we have this peace because God is doing something that we can't see. I, heard, I read this statement the other day. I thought it was such a good, spiritual maturity can be measured by how quickly one moves from panic to peace. How many of us have failed at that many times in our life? That we've stayed in a state of panic instead of realizing the presence of God that's in the boat with us. That Jesus is in the boat today with us. No matter what your storm looks like, no matter, no matter what hell is breaking loose around you, there's peace that he has given us. He said, peace, I'm going to leave with you. The peace, not as the world gives it, not exempt from something, but the presence of someone I'm going to leave with you so that you can experience the peace that passes all understanding. So when hell is breaking loose around you, you have such a peace that others would say, 
How in the world are you so peaceful when all of this is happening around you? And you can share the fact that, listen, I, don't, I, I choose not to stay in panic. I choose to stay in the peace that God has given me in this present moment. The peace of God in our life. I love that. And, and the psalmist wrote this. And it's not going to be on the screen, but he, but he said, you know, he talked about the shadows of death. He talked about, uh, yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, he said, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And here's the thing about shadows. Shadows cannot hurt you. Shadows are an image without substance. And there is no shadow without a light somewhere, right? John 1, 5 says, talks about the Lord. He says, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Matthew 28, 20, Jesus said, I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. Listen, look for a way to participate in what God is doing today and let, let the worry be for tomorrow. But today, let God do something in you. Participate in what he's doing today so that tomorrow when it comes, doesn't matter the storm that you experience the peace of God in your life today. The last thing is this. Last thing is this. Number four, the storms are shaping us so that Christ can be shown through us. I love this Old Testament scripture because I love, I love how a potter will take the wheel and step on that wheel and that wheel's just turning and sometimes they start to shape it mold it and then it doesn't look right and they they squash it back down and they they redo it again and they they build it up and shaping it and molding it into into that image and Isaiah kind of writes this he's he, he writes it in this way he says still God you are the father and we're the clay and you're our potter and all of us are what you've made us and he's the potter that takes our messed up life come on he takes our messed up life and starts shaping something out of it. That you haven't failed past anything today. Like, you, like, like your past and the things that you failed at miserably and the things you're continuing to, to get tripped up by and the addictions or something in your life today that just keeps tripping you up or things that, that are happening to you and you're asking why are they happening to me and all of this. And he takes all of those moments and all that, all that time to mold and shape our life. And that's what I love about, about the Father, the heart of God, is that He sees beyond our failures. He sees the potential that you don't even see in yourself. And He starts to mold that and shape those things. And he starts to take the storms in your life to make a story out of it. This is what our Savior does. This is what Jesus came to do. And He shapes and molds us and He takes the pain of our past and the pain of the present moment that we're facing and He molds and He takes and He shapes that. God is at work today, even in your failures. You haven't failed beyond His goodness. The Bible says it's His goodness that leads us to repentance. It's the goodness of God. It's not even the conviction of it. He's not trying to press down on you something and show you something where you fall short. You know where you fall short. I know where I fall short. But He takes those things and He uses them and He uses that storm and He molds it into this beautiful story and I love how the Apostle Paul talks about that we are, we are this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and it's not from us. That it's not me that has overcome something in my life. I overcame something because I served the one who, who over, overcame in his life. And he showed me a better way how to live that out. And he's working in me this, this treasure. And so how do you see a treasure in a jar? If you go back to first century, you, you would understand that the New Testament, um, the first century potters, they, they, they didn't have the refined baking process. Um, they were frequently cracking the pots 
you know? And this is my worst bat, dad joke of the day for sure, that God uses crack pots. Come on, somebody. I know, that's probably for Father's Day. Sorry, moms. Um, but the refining process, these pots would be cracked and you could see through the pot. And it's in our broken places that God can be seen. It's in our weakness that He's made strong. We have to understand that we're God's masterpiece with all the scars and all the brokenness and all the pain and all the suffering and all the things that we're going through and all the things that can be shown. The greatness of God, the greatness of God in my life is not from me, it is from Him. And there is brokenness in my life, there is cracked pieces that you can see inside the treasure of what God is doing. Because I am not perfect. It's all Jesus. Brokenness in your life. So that they can see the treasure inside. God uses the storm. He uses the pain. He uses the brokenness. So, so God can be revealed in and through our life. Moms, you're amazing. You're incredible. Some of the things that you guys have been through in life, if you shared that story, most of us couldn't, couldn't bear it. Couldn't stay for the whole story. But you're a treasure. You're an earthly treasure. And I know for some moms, they feel like they've failed at times. Your failure is never final. God's still working. He's still working on the brokenness in your life. He wants to bring healing to your life today. Men, the same thing. God wants to bring healing to your life today. Even in your failures, your mishaps, struggles, storms that are around you today. He wants to touch your life. He wants to, he wants to speak to the storm today. And speak to it. Peace, be still. Mike, I know for you, there's a storm happening in your heart. Peace, be still, my friend. Let the peace of God touch your life today. Peace, be still. So many people that are hurting, so many people are hurting for their loved ones in this room. Peace, be still. He's speaking to it right now. Holy Spirit's just speaking that over your life. Let's bow our heads just in a word of prayer, just in this moment. With every head bowed, every eye closed. I just want to pray for those today who you're just really struggling with anxiety and you're really struggling with the storms that are happening and your, and your focus you realize today that, you know what, I need to redirect my focus on the one that can speak to the storms in life. That can speak to it. And maybe you're here today and you're just overwhelmed. Just overwhelmed as anyone could be. You're just feeling the pressure of that. Listen, God will use that pressure and he will use that pain to continue to shape your life. But you got to, we got to redirect our focus and put our, put our, focus our eyes on him. If you're here today and you say, pastor, that's me. I, I just need you to pray for me today. Can you pray for me? I, I'm just overwhelmed by this. There's, there's hands. Yeah. You just lift your hand up. Is there anyone like, yep. I see all those hands going up. So thank you for being honest. You can put them right back down. Thank you so much. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm going to pray. Pastor Ron's going to come up and close this out. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing in the room. I, I, I pray, Lord, that 
that Lord, even though the storms of life are happening around us, and even though we, we're the, the boat feels like it's filling up and it feels like it's sinking, we have to turn to the one that is at peace, that is asleep in the boat, that brings peace in our life. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just that they would sense the peace of God. The, those who raise their hands that feel so overwhelmed by by the storms of life right now. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you just touch them, that they would sense the peace that passes all understanding today. That our eyes would be directed to you. That our eyes, that our hearts would be fixed on you, Lord. And not the storms that are happening around us. And not even the storm that seems to be happening in us. Speak to that storm today, God. Let them experience your peace. Thank you for your voice. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. In your name we pray, Lord. And everybody said amen. Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand today.